Okay, so from here I want to place uh, the arch of my foot to the curve of Astri's lower back and just around the bum as well. So the toes are towards the lower back. Same hand position that we have in the previous warm up. So thumb want to kiss towards each other and I clip my hand to the ankle. Awesome. I have a really nice view from here of Astri's elbows, so because she's squeezing them in. So I'm going to ask her to bend her elbows and lean back towards me. I place my hands out so I can reach towards her elbows. In the first episode or two, we did uh, the kind of calibrations and the entries to other poses. We're going to do the same thing here. You're going to bend the knees, receive down, catch the elbows, and then press and extend up to the sky. For me, there, I'm just giving my weight. It, it requires a lot of trust than regular bird would do. Then I can switch my hands to the shoulders if I like. When I feel comfortable, I remove my hands. Either I just bring them to the side and over my head. Or if you are quite flexible in your lower back, you can hook the hands on your own ankle. So again, we talked in the first couple of episodes about the stacking of the bones and the alignment here. So again, we want to find the hips and the legs in one straight line, nice and stacked over the hips. So fly your here, squeeze in your knees slightly in, that will help you to protect your lower back a little bit more. Okay. To come down, we're going to first encourage the flyer to grab the ankles again. I remove my hand, clip my hands back into the base of the ankle. I'll bend my knees and I'll switch my hands to the elbows. I so bring again, my chin towards the chest. And then we tip and place back up to standing. Okay, so talking through the spotting, we did this as well in the previous episodes where we find a nice warrior stance, really strong, so we're protecting ourselves first. The hands are again going to watch around both sides of the hips, the far side and the near side. So as they enter into the pose, I'm following the position, making sure I'm stable and strong, holding each hip. Maybe if they feel really stable like right now, I can slowly take the hands away, leave a little gap of about an inch between us, and let them find their own balance. Very nice. The reason we have our hand around the far side and not kind of one hand underneath and around here is in case they fall away to one side. Can you demo a little bit of a fall? Then I'm here to catch and secure and bring back to the middle. Okay? Thanks. Down. On the down, I can also switch the hand to the upper back to help lift her head and ease the transition. Make sure she's comfortably standing back on the ground. So that's also something to note that how far away you are can change how difficult the pose is. So we want to be just about almost that the base can touch with the fingers, the heels, or the legs of the flyer. Just about. There Your you go. Hands. That's a good distance. Yes. The other way. Yes. I'm a little bit awkward, but it's fine. So thumbs in. Bend your knees and lean back. All the way. There you go. Relax. Soften your shoulders. Everything. Yes. Bend the knees. Also, another thing for a spotter here. Sometimes your flyer legs are fully straight. So just tap them, bend your knees. That will give the weight more towards the base of the feet. And a point to note for the base is, you are affecting how much back bend the fly is going to receive by how much you point or how much you flex your toes. So here if Brent points more, it's lifting her chest, but it also can be putting more pressure on the back bend, can feel uncomfortable, or if he flexes more, it maybe eases it and also drops her a little bit lower. Nice. Very good. 